Hi yogis, it's Michelle. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to do a quick short video um, to help support the function of your low back. A lot of times people come into my class and they ask, what can I do for sciatic nerve syndrome? I'm definitely one that has experienced that. I um, experienced it about six years ago and every now and again I still kind of feel it and I have my go-to poses that I'm going to share with you now in this order and I'm going to do it all with you each pose we hold for 30 seconds I'll keep track of the time you keep track of your breath when you're ready we're going to start in pigeon pose so you'll bring your right knee towards your right wrist and stretch the left leg back. Normally in pigeon pose, we stretch it out and walk left, right. But for this series, we're just gonna hang out on our elbows. So hopefully you're in it and the clock has started. Just begin to notice your breath, breathing in and out of your nose or your mouth. It's entirely up to you. But I feel the more we linger in these poses, the more we can start guiding the breath in areas, like pulling it up into our ribs and into our chest, across the collarbones. Go ahead, that was 30 seconds. So we'll just switch. Bringing the left knee up. Try to relax areas like your shoulders, your head, your neck. You can go down if you like, but I just find it um, a little more comfortable to hang out here. But I think the more you do these poses for your low back, um, the more you'll add your own little flair to it. Go ahead and change. So like I said, we'll do three of each and we're on our second one. I'm so used to using my ujjayi breath that I, I use it in this as well. Go ahead and switch. And feel free at the end of these videos, if you have any comments um, or requests or questions, I would love to hear what you have to say. I didn't put these poses together myself. I have a physical therapist that takes my yoga class. Go ahead and switch. This will be our last one. And I asked her, you know, for a little help. And um, she gave me these recommendations. And I've been doing them ever since, six years now. So I like to do it first thing in the morning, but that doesn't always work out but I fit it in whenever I can. I forgot to say at the beginning, you're gonna need a strap or a towel. Um, so if you need to hit pause towards the end, cause that's when we'll need it in the last one, go ahead and switch. Or maybe you can ask your child or significant other to go ahead and grab that for you. Yeah, I'll use a blue one. So the next one is gonna have us coming onto our back. So when you're ready, go ahead and swing around and lower down. And we'll bring the knees in just for a pause, rocking it side to side before we get started. And the next one is another version of pigeon pose, but with a little more attention with pushing of the right knee away. Rather than pulling it in, we're gonna push it away. So the right hand will go to the inner right leg and your left hand will go to the right heel. And I like to be mindful that I'm not twisting in my ankle, compromising there. So I flex and I grab and push. Just another five seconds. 
Relax your shoulders, your face. Go ahead and we'll gently switch. So if this doesn't work for you, the pulling of the right heel, you can lift up the knee and grab a hold of either the front of the shin or underneath the leg. Grabbing under the leg is easier if you have tight shoulders. If you come here and you start to round, you have that option just to relax it back. And then go ahead and switch. I personally like to just hold the foot in my hand. I'm already starting to feel relief in my low back. And go ahead and switch. I've been teaching yoga for almost 10 years and in every single yoga class that I've ever taught there is always someone in there complaining about their low back or sciatic nerve. So that's what really got me into focusing on the low back and what people need. Switch. And go ahead, switching for the last time. And we'll lift up the legs and go into the next one for three rounds. So right knee over your left. Relax your hands on either leg. It doesn't matter. can do these poses up to three times a day. Go ahead and switch. My son, who is a football player, also had an injury about three or four years ago. He was hit in the back and it was instant sciatic nerve. And he instantly went to my go-to poses and even though he doesn't suffer from it anymore, he uses them every day. He says it helps to release a lot of tension in his low back. Go ahead and switch. And my son is 20 and was about 16 or 17 when he had his first taste of sciatic nerve. So it doesn't matter how old you are, what you do could be sitting on the couch all day and still be suffering. Go ahead and switch. And then we'll switch around one more time. So my husband, who is a chiropractor, 
also has a few of his own exercises that he does for his low back. And I think I'll get with him on the next video and see if those exercises might work for you. And last time, switching. The next one we're going to do is a knee down twist. Definitely wasn't one of my favorites, but the more I'm doing it, the more I'm starting to enjoy the benefits of it. So bring your right knee in, relax both feet, and take your left hand to the outside of the right knee, right hand down, right shoulder down, and gently guide right knee over to the left. Just observe where you're at. Don't force the knee, but feel something, allowing yourself to breathe into those areas. Inhale, center, bring the knee in, bring your left knee in, and then gently switch. Right hand guides the left knee to the right, and your left arm to the left. It helps you get deeper. Gazing in the opposite direction of the knee really does help. Inhale back in and switch. Inhale in and switch. And then one more time, bringing it in and switching. So we have just one more after this where you need your towel or your strap. <laughs> and bring it. And bring it back. Let's bring our knees in and just rock it side to side a few times. If it makes sense, lift up your head, neck, and shoulders. Wrap your arms around to grab opposite elbows or wrists or anywhere in between. 
Go ahead, place your head down. Take your hands behind your legs and with a little momentum, rock your way up to seat. So this one doesn't really have anything to do with flexibility. So take your strap or your towel around just the right ball of your foot and then imagine you're riding a horse so you don't pull it all the way back. You don't let the horse pull you, but you find somewhere in the middle where the spine is nice and long. The front of your thigh is active. Now, if you have the flexibility with the exhales, you can start to lean into that a little bit more but make sure you're not dumping your belly on your thigh, that you're actually lifting your low belly to the back body, drawing your heart towards your toes. And then go ahead, switch. So when you start, pull back on the strap or towel a little. And as you exhale, you can walk your hands down. And switch. So I've been doing these for a while, so I am a little bit more flexible and open in my hips and the back of my legs. So if you are too, you can start going deeper, but remember, don't dump the weight into the belly. Try to lift the belly and reach your heart forward and switch. And whether you can grab the foot or not, I still do like the, the pull of the strap just to keep the shoulder blades back and down into the spine where they belong. We tend to do this coming here and the strap really helps us stay out of that. Last time switching. And then last time on the other side. I'm going to pull back a little bit here because I'm starting to feel a little something in my hip flexor and I don't want to um, lean into something that doesn't feel right. We're just about done. Thank you for taking this time and doing some exercises for your low back, hanging out with me. I hope it worked. Have a wonderful day.